Hey guys, um, I'm back again. On my last update, I told you that I had a new controller installed into the bridge port. I have been working on a flood coolant enclosure. Um, this is just a tray, all four sides, put two walls and back on it. I still have to figure out what I'm gonna do for the front door. I don't really necessarily want a, a bar running across the top for me to whack my head on or anything. But the back is gonna be adjustable. I still gotta get another piece cut out here so you can adjust it up and down. I've been doing testing on my flood coolant. Found out that the machine is slightly tilted. So I've just got a little bit over here. And I got a lot over here. So the machine is tilted to the left. Um, I still haven't um, leveled the thing. I mean, I'll do that eventually. But um, anyway. I figured I would do at least one test cut with the flood coolant, make sure that I, to figure out what pressure that I can use it on without running over, seeing it is tilted to one side, it likes to pack up over here instead of the other side, and it'll eventually, if you look down here, this is slightly tapered right now, it'll beat up right here and it'll just pour off the side. When I get everything leveled, depending on how much flood I have, I may put in a drain on either side, I'm not sure. So far, I had the walls cut out of some steel I had, and it had little holes off of it, so I had to go through, weld them all up, and buzz them down with a grinder on both sides and the back. This tray can actually came from work. It was came up a machine that they got rid of and I got it through an auction sale. So when I first put it on, I had real bad problems about um, surface tension of it going up underneath it and it just dripping out all down here on the switches and everything and it just poured everywhere. So I had a catch bucket, but I went and cut my corners everywhere here with the zip wheel and then just bent everything down all the way around the whole thing and then re-welded the seams back up. That's why this is uh, black. This is just from the welding. I have some acrylic that I'm gonna put up in the front so I can use um, a flood coolant without it just getting everywhere. So that's my latest update for my flood coolant. If you're wondering what pump I'm using, it came from Harbor Freight. It's a, I cannot remember what it is. I'll have to look it up this is what it looks like yeah, it's been in there for a little bit so I believe it's 2,000 gallons it was about a hundred dollars um, so it pumps from there and pumps it into this I think it's a 50 micron micro filter you can just get these at Lowe's the coat goes through there goes up this line over to the manifold and I have it tapped um, for MPT and then I have my flood adjustment here and you know you can direct it wherever you want. This will get changed. I've already had this pop off just by adjusting it around and if I adjust it far enough you can see it wants to leak right here. I'll get rid of this. Probably won't use lock line at all. I'm just not really, not really crazy about it. I'll probably have something like a, a quarter MPT um, nozzles with some kind of coolant ring or something. I'll like to put something right here. Just have a coolant ring. <clears throat> but that'll come later. In the last video, you saw the Centroid software. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. And there we go. So this is the software. Right now it's it automatically sets itself in an e-stop, so and you can hear the little relay clicking in the box. So you click the button click the button, it'll reset it. Um then it says here it says machine warning machine home not set, price cycle stock to send machine home. Uh for the for my machine, for the limit switches that I have. 
The software was kind of acting kind of funky. It's, it's programmed to hit a switch and then come off of it. It can't run any more than a quarter of an inch. If you're running in inches, I'm running in inches. It wouldn't let go of the contact in a quarter of an inch. So I had to write a macro program for my homing. So when I come down here, click cycle start, it'll start running. So what it does is it goes up and hits the switch. It'll bump down an eighth of an inch. It'll dwell for a second. Um, then it'll set a zero at that eighth of an inch offset off that switch. And then it'll move down off the switch itself a quarter of an inch. And every other axis does, it repeats the same thing. It'll hit the switch, come off a little bit, wait, set a zero, and then it'll come off a quarter of an inch. So that, um, just sitting just barely off the switch. I can still move to touch the switch, but it won't actually um, over travel. So this is the machine so far. Uh, I do have spindle control via VFD. I still have to get rid of this. This is the problem. Um, the VFD is set up for analog control so it uses a zero to ten um, volt signal that sends it to the vfd the vfd then transfers that into a frequency and it you know, goes from there the pulley system needs to be a one to one or a two to one or something like that to be able to get accurate spindle speeds this is set the motor set it's i think it's 1385 so i've got it you know somewhere close to that so it's basically a one-to-one -one. and I've got the VFD set up to go past 60 Hertz it'll actually go up to 120 so I can actually double the speed from this motor um, it's not necessarily made for that it works and I don't know maybe one day I'll get a new DC servo spindle motor or something I don't know we'll see we'll, we'll have to see but for now it works uh, yes, it does reduce torque at high speeds, uh, but it do, but the VFD does have a torque boost setting that I can use to, you know, I think it will bump torque up to above, up to 30%. So once I get some test cuts, I'll figure out what I need to do, set the VFD to run what I need it to do, and we can go from there. But for now, I'm going to put y'all down and I'm going to try to set up a, set up a vice and maybe, just maybe, run a test program. All right, so I got my piece of stock put in there. I am going to first Find the center of it and we'll start from there.
you didn't see, because I didn't have the, the camera on for some reason, um, I came in, decked it off with the face mill, came in with a drill, drilled it out, I came in with a long reach, um, three flute, and circle interpolated all the way down this bore, and now what you just saw was a, a uh, quarter inch roughing end mill just doing this pocket right here. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, again, I'm sorry I didn't have my camera on for some reason. So call for tool change. We're gonna do. We're gonna go to tool ten, which is an eighth inch four fluid. Something was loose, something somewhere. I'm not exactly sure what. It just snapped right off. Uh, it didn't even make a full pass. All right, so I found another end mill, and I found a problem. It was actually with the tool holder itself. Um, there got some. There was some junk in the thread for the weld on flat in the tool holder so i had to tap it or chase it with the tap got it got the junk out and the set screw looked kind of junky on the flat end so i just went ahead and threw a new one in it <laughs> both of my 5 16 end mills you know doing this um so i'm just going to rough it out with a quarter inch um it should be able to get most everything inside the pockets there's going to be a little bit left over that um that i can see in the simulation so i'll just have i'll just hit it with a file or something but um here we go next tool
guys so here is the part um made a few mistakes on it broke a few end mills but we're getting there we're learning uh when i pulled it off the bore here was probably half a thou shy of this here i'm just trying to this is going to be an adapter if you haven't figured it out so um i broke my last 5 16 end mill to get in these slots so i just came in with a quarter inch and roughed out as much as i could and then filed it out i'm gonna try to get this to work to fit i might have to just grind out the inside of this by hand um i did try to relocate it after pulling it out and you can see right there i broke my end mill but it's okay we're gonna try again i'm just gonna see if this thing will fit um, as far as the teeth and we try to do another one so it's getting pretty good surface finishes you know, for the most part not the best in the world but coming off a knee mill with a rougher it's not bad all right so if you enjoyed this video um, i'm gonna have a lot more coming um we're going to try to do some work in aluminum. I've got some projects lined up, some products I might think about trying to make. Um, some of them require a lathe. I do have a lathe, but I, just don't, I don't have it in this building at the moment. Um, but stay tuned and I'll catch y'all later.